Hey, my name is Danielle Diamond. I am going to be performing a couple songs for you. Um, this first one is called Another Lifetime. It's the title track to my most recent release of music and um, touches on just relationships that happen um, just in the wrong time, in the wrong dimension, in the wrong plane of existence and thinking that you care about one another so much um, that you're willing to part ways and maybe, you know, it's not so bad because in another lifetime you just might find each other again and it will be meant to be then, whenever that is. Whether it's 100 years, 1,000 years, tomorrow, who knows? It could be just in another lifetime. So here we go. It's okay that things aren't working out I'm not worried, darling Because our paths will cross again somehow Somewhere beyond the world we're in My heart would know you anywhere So let me go, I'll see you and so I'll we'll say goodbye for now Till the timing's right And we'll walk away on parallel dimension lines And I know it sounds crazy But I, I will love you in another lifetime I will find you in another I will hold you in And all the things we'll do The things are meant to be It might take millennia or two But we'll get there eventually I'll always love you No matter what But the present moment's not for us so we'll say goodbye for now till the time is right And we'll walk away on parallel dimension lines And I know it sounds crazy but I I will love you in another lifetime But we have to go on different paths So that we might find our way back and true love transcends all things believe let go and no time will bring yes it'll bring it back to me back to me back to me
hold you in another And I will love you in another, another lifetime And I will find you in another I will hold you in another And I will love you in another lifetime My musical journey um, So I have been singing ever since I can remember I mean my first memories are you know, involving music and just dancing and singing in my living room with my older sister. And we were kids of the 90s, so the Spice Girls were our big thing. And I always joke, like, that was my first taste of performance was National Park Service potlucks because my dad worked for the Park Service. My mom did for a time as well, but they would hold staff potlucks and get-togethers. And my sister and I would just get up and entertain the masses with Spice Girl routines. Um, but I have always been singing. I've had an extremely supportive family. Very, very fortunate um, that they have seen my love for music and supported it from the start. And uh, they were very much like, they're not stage parents whatsoever, just really wanted me to to do what I wanted to do and guide me through it. Um, they encouraged me to to try out for little talent shows here and there if, if it was interesting to me. Um, and, you know, I grew up in Washburn. I grew up just up the road from Big Top, and I had actually never been to Big Top uh, for a concert until they held this contest called Big Top Idol in 2010. And I ended up entering that and ended up winning it. Um, but it's because of Big Top Idol that very night, I do credit for like being the catalyst for a lot of what my music career um, has been. I The person that was running sound that night ended up becoming kind of a mentor for me after I graduated high school, um, took me under his wing and kind of started the whole networking process with people in the Twin Cities and then I met my husband in the cities, and he's also a musician, so it was just like, oh, all of these things started to fall into place because of Big Top Idol. <laughs> and so I do I do really thank Big Top for, for that opportunity um, because it, it's led to so many other really awesome doors that have opened up. Um, and it was all because of that one night. I think it, yeah, it was just a really cool, life-changing experience, but... Then, you know, I've just, I've been writing since I was about, um, well, I remember starting to write when I was in third grade, and, you know, they're terrible songs, but they're, you know, they're songs, and I just, every year, just kept trying to get better and better, and listen to the people that really inspire me, and try to not copy them, but just figure out, okay, yeah, how are they, how are they structuring their songs, and how can I, you know, make mine sound just as cool as theirs, um, or just put a spin on it and make it my own. Um, so yeah, it's been a lot of just like self educating as a, as an independent singer songwriter. We just happened to be filming this like 48 hours after a really wild experience. I just had two days ago, my favorite, singer-songwriter. Um, his name's Hunter Hayes. I don't know if I can name drop him in this, but <laughs> he's he's always been one of my favorite artists ever since he um, came out with his, his first album. And I ended up getting to like just by chance uh, perform with him 48 hours ago. And so I'm fresh off of that and I'm like, I can do anything. Anything's possible, right? So he's just an awesome musician and I hope he, I hope he tours through um, big top at some point down the line, but it it just I'm so just like on cloud nine from that experience getting to to sing with him while he was passing through on his solo tour right now. Um, so that at the forefront of my mind is is just I, I pinch myself that I find myself in these situations that um, I get to get to just stand on the same stage as as people like like Hunter Hayes and. Um, he's definitely somebody that I respect for his production abilities and his instrumentation, just everything. He's just an incredible um, person. So I don't know if there's like particular events that I look back on 
that were like, oh, oh well, you know what? No, nope, there was another one. So my husband and I are songwriters, and we entered a contest on a whim um, almost 10 years ago as well. And uh, we, Wes, my husband, ended up winning the contest, and we got to go and work with the Recording Academy and um, go to Nashville and record at Ocean Way Studios, which is like, like the coolest place in the world. And that... I guess that experience coupled with my interactions with Hunter Hayes, those two things have been just like, okay, cool things do happen when you put yourself out there and I just got to keep doing it and see what happens. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about sort of how you came back to Hunter Hayes? Hunter Hayes, I, you know what, I... I just remember hearing his his hit song "Wanted" came out in like oh gosh, was it 2013, 2012, somewhere around there. And I'm not a huge country music fan myself. I, you know, I respect it, but it's I just don't find myself listening to it day to day. Um, but suddenly it was like I heard that song, and I'm like, dang, that's a it's a well crafted song. It's got a great hook. It's catchy. It's really beautiful. It. Um, and the guy seems like a really awesome guy. And I learned, too, that, you know, Hunter, he plays all the instruments. He produces his stuff. And it's just like, dang, I I can respect that. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Because all I do is sing and play piano. And so to see this one human being um, able to, to do multiple um, jobs as a musician, it was just really inspiring. Um, and... It was funny because in 2014, my parents and I went to Nashville, and it was the second time I'd been there. We're kind of just bumming around and happened to bump into him on a sidewalk, and it was like, of all the people in the universe, it had to be him that we got to, to run into, and he was really sweet. And back then, I promised him, like, I'm going to share a stage with you someday, and here we go. It happened 48 hours ago, <laughs> and I hope it wasn't the last, but yeah, it's just kind of, it's just funny. Serendipity, for sure. Um, I don't have any particular like rituals. I, 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 I like to save my voice as possible as much as possible um, before a performance, which um, during the school year that's obviously not very feasible. <laughs> um, but I, I'm not a huge fan. I can't. I wish I could eat like a delicious, nutritious, full meal right before, but I can't do that either. So. Um, I keep it pretty simple. I make some tea, throat coat tea, um, and just try to breathe and remember that it's all just for fun and I, that I'm just lucky that I even get to do it, I guess, is is try, trying to get in the right mindset. Um, I am a perfectionist, and it's really annoying, and I've gotten better as I've gotten older, kind of, but um, especially when it comes time before going into the studio. The studio is an intimidating place for me. I would much rather just do a live performance. Um, the studio, it's like you just got to, here we go. I, I'm in the mindset that I got to get on the first take, and that's, you know, never, ever typically the case unless you get lucky. But um, so when I when I go into the studio, I try to really just step into, like, it's going to be what it's going to be. We might might make something cool. Maybe we'll make mistakes, and those turn into other things. But, Yeah. <laughs> So I end up writing a lot about love and heartbreak and just the fragility of life, and how short it is and how weird it is and frustrating it is. Um, growing up in northern Wisconsin, too, you can't not be um, inspired by the natural beauty of, of the lake and the north woods. So nature always finds its way into, into my songs as well. But... Um, yeah, sometimes you just, I, I, I just get a phrase or like a word will come to me and it's like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And I'll either write it down or jot it in my phone real quick to save the idea. And then when I have the ability to sit down at a piano and play around with it, that's kind of how my songwriting process ends up coming um, together. But yeah, it is, it's super mysterious. It's never, never the same from time to time. I'm not like a structured, okay, I'm going to sit down at this time of day and write for this long. I should, like that is a good 
you know, it is, there's good habits in, in, in sitting down and having structure like that. But where I'm at in life right now, I just don't have that, um, time <laughs> and energy. So it kind of just has to happen when it happens, which is also fun. Cause then it's really organic and natural and yeah, I've gotten a lot of cool songs just, just that have just presented themselves to me and I've been fortunate to get them out. <laughs> So when I was little, um, well, my parents were always playing music all around the house and on car rides and everything. So I got a lot of, um, I mean, Prince, Prince was my childhood and, um, the Spice Girls, like I said, just the nineties. I love the nineties, but, um, I, I don't know how I ended up getting into the band Savage Garden, but when I was like in kindergarten, um, truly madly deeply is out and I'm like dang that's a great song <laughs> and I remember getting I got their CD I had their two CDs and would sit and study the the little insert with the lyrics that came with the CDs and I would just sit and like as a six seven year old just like analyze those lyrics as I'm listening to their songs um, and that's when I think I was truly starting to realize like oh hey this is like this is a process, this is a craft, and I can kind of see how it works, and I really like how they put this emotion into words and how they set the scene like this, so I kind of learned a lot of song structure through Savage Garden. Um, and as I've mentioned, you know, pretty much this whole night long, I've just been yakking away about Hunter Hayes, but he's, <laughs> again, very inspiring individual. He's got an incredible catalog of, of music and, and ideas. And I, I think it's, it's just, I don't, I don't know what it is about, about certain individuals that I just appear to be drawn to, but I really do appreciate people that can write a good song. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, Crash and Burn, Crash and Burn by Savage Garden. I would sing that one over and over and over again. Um, oh man, it's just, yeah, it's so great. And I was like, again, a little, I think when I was that age, you know, Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears were out. And it's like, I think that's what most people, I was listening to them too, don't get me wrong. But I don't think any of my little elementary classmates then were listening to Savage Garden. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I love them. Well, you know, I'm always... I'm always hoping to get better about releasing new music. Um, and I did last year, July, 2023 was when another lifetime, my EP came out and I sure would hope to, to do another one within the next year. Um, my husband is, is more of the sound engineer recording end of things, which is great because I am not. <laughs> and, um, he's really good about encouraging me and gently pushing me so hopefully within the next year I can have some new tunes out and I'm just putting it out there but I sure would love to work with Hunter Hayes <laughs> and um, I don't know any any opportunity that ever presents itself um, to me I, I typically say yes um, and I always learn and get something out of it so all right this next song is um, called Cups of Coffee and I I'm not a huge coffee drinker. I guess I love coffee. I don't drink it a lot. Um, I try to keep it kind of like as a weekend treat. And um, But the song is is kind of fun. I, I blended in a lot of coffee drinks, and maybe you'll hear what you like to consume in the song. But it's essentially about um, uh, just meeting at a coffee shop and meeting with somebody that meant a lot to you from the past um, and that is still important to you in in the present moment. Um, and just as you are meeting over coffee, you're just like, oh, this is great. And you're reliving moments. And it's just, it's it's nice to, to have um, a friendship like that that has lasted throughout the years um, and that you every once in a while still get together and have a cup of coffee. So here we go. Long ago, so it seems When 
I've had us both living in the city. You would meet me every couple weeks over cups of coffee. And time has slipped by suddenly. We both settled down separately. But you let me know when you're in town visiting. And we have cups of coffee. Over lattes, over chai tea, over mocha, it comes back to me. It's either you or the caffeine that's got my heartbeat racing. Sweet as sugar, smooth as cream. You wake me up into a dream The way nostalgia curls its steam Over oh, cups of coffee Oh, and people come and people leave But we're still sitting here happily Over lattes, over chai tea, over mocha, it comes back to me. It's either you or the caffeine that's got my heartbeat racing. I, I won't ever forget what we had back then. I, I wait every day in this cafe till the end. And I close my eyes and try to drink it in before you Over cold brew and cappuccino and double shot americano. And if you listen, wouldn't you know it's our song playing on the radio? Over lattes, over chai tea, over mocha, it comes back to me. It's either you or the caffeine got my heartbeat racing. And I, I won't ever forget what we have back then. Every day in this cafe till the end I close my eyes and try to drink it in Before you're gone again And when we've run out of things to say I don't want to leave but I can't stay And neither can you so it's time we throw away Cups of coffee. Until next time, you come back to me. Over cups of coffee, you'll come back to me. Just, yeah, just support one another and whatever and whatever way it is, whether it's in music or art or one's identity, um, where they're out in life, just, just stand by each other, support. Um, it's, it's taken me incredible places just having support from family and from the community. And so I guess that's, that's my overall hope is that everybody can experience what I've gotten to experience um, in life through support of others. Something like that? <laughs> okay, hopefully. Okay, there we go. Good enough.